thank you all for joining us and welcome to i always have to glance down the number episode 42 uh, and topic of discussion this evening or this morning um, i should say a massive shout out to melissa for being awake at 4 30 a.m to agree to to 4 30 a.m to do this so massive thanks for that that's that's seriously impressive but episode 42 which is all about video video marketing or video in podiatry in general and we're delighted to have dave uh, melissa and jonathan um uh, of which we will uh, attach attach links to all of their various pages and channels in, in the comments three people that that Craig and I, when we decided what we wanted to do this type of episode, we said, who do we want on? We want a, a spectrum of experience, people's videos that we know of, that we like, we enjoy. People that have got experience in this. And these three names came up and, and we're just delighted to have you all. So thank you so much. I'll try and, as I pitch the questions out, to avoid that annoyance of everyone talking at the same time, I'll try and remember to direct a question to one of you initially. And then once you're done, feel free to to pass it on to someone else and then everyone can have their say. But it, it won't surprise anyone to hear that, that most of the questions and concerns people have about video are probably the questions and concerns we all have before we start doing them, which is why should we do it? How do we do it? When do we do it? Um, and, and the fears associated with it. So I guess what we'll start is is just asking personal questions straight off the bat. And and rather than talking about why, why we should do video for <laughs> promotion, for education and things, just personal questions to each one of you individually as to why you do do videos. So what is your your personal motivation? And, and Melissa, we'll come to you first. You get the honor as you're, you got up the earliest for this. <laughs> yeah, so... And most hair. <laughs> <laughs> so probably the biggest reason why I do video is because I find that people, the community don't really know what podiatrists do. So I feel that through using video, we're able to help people to understand how we can help them and what it is that we actually do in our job um, and what services we provide. So just communication and letting people know how we can help them is probably the biggest one. And then, yeah, personally as well, it's uh, that fear factor with videos, you know. So I think just that kind of personal side of things, just trying to uh, get out of the comfort zone and yeah, do videos regularly, do Facebook Lives and that as well for that reason. Actually, Melissa, can I just ask a question on your Facebook Lives? That's how I first got to notice you was your, your Facebook Lives. Yep. And, and I've been dying to ask you this. How much time do you put into planning them or do you just go on and do them? It depends. Some, <laughs> there'll be a bit of planning, but sometimes if the opportunity arises and it's too good to, yeah. to miss, we'll just do it on the fly and... We just roll with it and see how it goes. Because I'll, I'll be honest, I think your videos are actually really good, and I've put a link into your your clinic's channel for people to have a look at them. Thank you. To me, it looks as though you do do them on the fly. They come yeah. across that that relaxed, and I thought, wow, yeah, this this, is, this looks totally unrehearsed, totally unpracticed. Yeah, well, thank you. But yeah, it's probably a mix of some are on the fly and some are a, a planned uh, kind of process in advance. So a bit of a mix of the two. Sure. Okay. I, I always wonder whether people think we plan this or we make it up as we go along, Craig. What do you think? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. Why, yeah, uh, uh, jo Jonathan, um, what's your yeah. personal uh, motivation? What drives you? Why do you do what you do? The, 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 I love my job. I love my profession. It's not only my profession, it's my passion. So this is something I actually grew up doing. My father was a chiropodist. Uh, for over 30 years. So this is something since a little baby, I've been part of the industry. And again, who here is a, a podiatrist mm -hmm. in, this, in this chat? Yeah, yeah. Put their hands up, put uh, their hands up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm the odd one out. So actually, I'm practicing in Ontario, Canada, and I'm a chiropodist. Um, so a lot of people don't know, don't know what a chiropodist is and what we can do and the whole full, full scope of, of my profession. So that's why to me, I really wanted to share with the world on what I do and something that I love doing. And that's the main reason I started the channel. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. What is your, what, oh, sorry, go. What does your father think of your, um, as, as a chiropodist as well, what does he think of your, your, your channel, your YouTube channel? He's, uh, he, he likes it a lot. Uh, he, he never really did some of the, the procedures I've done or seen the feed I've seen. So he was, he's, He's proud. He's pretty happy, except for that one parody. He's like, "What are you doing with your life?" There's one lower, a little bit lower. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he has, uh, 
<laughs> he had a good laugh. And he, he's happy to see that uh, the profession has changed a lot since he first started. Yeah, perfect. Uh, David, last but obviously David. not least. <laughs> David, are you my mother? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do it? Um, that's interesting. I, I think my motives initially started off purely to promote the business. It was, it was very much a, a business decision. Um, and it was, it was about three years ago that I went to an event in, locally in Birmingham where Google were there talking about the future of, of kind of visibility online. And they were talking very heavily about video and about how easy it was to get a selfie stick and a microphone and, a, and an iPhone and just do a video. And I thought, you know what, this sounds good. I reckon I can do this. Um, and I put my first video out and it was awful. It was absolutely awful. I also do remember saying to somebody, if I ever bought a selfie stick, they were allowed to beat me to death with it. And, and I've still got one somewhere. But it kind of went from there and I, I found how much I enjoyed it. And it changed from being purely about promoting the clinic to becoming promoting podiatry, educating patients. And I, I really enjoy it. And, you know, it's the adage, isn't it, that you, you know, a, a picture speaks a thousand words and, and video just eclipses that and just goes way past it and there's also the element of, of no like and trust which i know a lot of people talk about that if if you see somebody in if you see somebody on video oh my god look at that um if you see somebody on video then you've almost got a bit of a rapport with them already man that's when i had look at oh he's a good looking boy isn't he <laughs> wow there you go. So, but also, I, I, I think it's, it's a really good way of promoting our profession. And, and you know, both John and Melissa have touched on this, that, that people don't know who we are and necessarily what we do. And, and video helps to change that. There you go. Perfect. So that was the latest one. There you go. Well, so like what, what, I, what I love, what I really love there uh, about all three of your answers is that genuinely the first thing that came to mind was about promotion of the profession, not just yourselves, but the profession. And, and certainly a message that, that Craig and I are very much on board with. And also then secondary promotion was education. And what wasn't really mentioned there, but what I want to ask you all about is obviously that the personal benefits of doing so. So I think a lot of people say, I want to do this because I want to get patients in. I want to do this because I want to be busier in clinic. And I think personally, and feel free to disagree with me, that's probably the wrong reason to start doing it, but it will probably serendipitously become an outcome of, of, of doing it. You know, none of you mentioned there that you did this to, be, to get busier in clinic, but I guarantee, I'm sure you're going to tell me in a minute that you are busier in clinic. You do get patients because of this. Um, do you notice or do you audit um, where people come from? Do, have you noticed, I'll start with you, Jonathan, just because you've got the biggest, the biggest audience. Um, you must have seen a massive spike in in the people that come into your clinic off the back of your, your online presence. Is that a reasonable comment? Yes. It's been very interesting that I practice in Mississauga, just outside of Toronto. And every day I get calls from the United States asking questions. Where, you know, where's your office about the services all over there. So I've had um, patients who come in out of town, out of province, out of country, just to, just to come see me. So it's really opened up, all the doors in terms of reaching new people. Yeah, I think yeah. Jonathan, that was really going to be my big question of you because like looking at your YouTube channel here, you've got this extraordinary, you know, 268,000 subscribers. You've got this, this video here has had 9 million views. Um, my, my assumption is the vast majority of those would be outside of where you practice. Um, yeah. so, so Ian's question and your, your answer was obviously just how, how much benefit are you getting locally? And obviously there is a substantial local benefit to you, um, mm -hmm. despite the, the, the global reach of what, of what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I think think know all the numbers. I can see that um, only 4% of all of my viewers are coming from Canada. The rest are internationally. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> most people are outside of my region. Um, but again, it has helped locally with um, some people finding me through that area or through the videos. Yeah. Um, do you find the same as well, Melissa? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, yeah, we'd probably find that most of our new clients do come through from seeing our, either our videos or reading our content on Facebook. Uh, but I guess using Facebook as well, it will link through to your website if you do have, you know, blogs attached or things like that too. <laughs> So, yeah, definitely I would say that it does help with yeah, letting people know what we do and bringing up that awareness to let them know how we can help 
and that does yeah transition into yeah people booking in for that reason yeah um anything to add dave Oh, I've, I've had conversations with patients who've, who've traveled from a couple of counties away for treatment because they've seen my videos and they've gone, Ooh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to travel 40 or 50 miles just to come and see you because I've already seen you on the screen. So it does have, it does have a really good effect. The probably one of the, the biggest effects I've seen though is probably not with patients. It's been with other practitioners. Mm. It's the interest you get from other people in your industry. And there's been definitely been a spike in, in, in social media and videos from other people in the industry, which I think, which I think is brilliant. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I think the, the people that get into it to get busy, um, the reason they go about it the wrong way. I've seen a lot of people recently that have started Facebook pages or Twitter accounts or Instagram or all of them really. And then their, their comments are that their, 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 their posts are call this number for an appointment. Or we've got available. We've got availability on Tuesday, and, and they're just playing the game. In my opinion, in my my inexperienced opinion, they're playing the game poorly. Play the game like you guys do, which is just put out value and content and education, and and the rest comes. But if you go searching for that, uh, I think I personally would, would would argue that's the wrong way around. I, I don't know if you guys agree with that, but um, yeah, Ian, I yeah, agree a hundred percent. I think yeah. It doesn't, it's not helpful. It doesn't work if you just throw it out there with a, an offer. But I think just to be putting out consistent content, uh, I think, yeah, that's the, the best way to go about it for sure. Perfect. Let's, let's talk about content if we can, because I think the biggest fear, well, no, no, the biggest fear is people putting their, their face out there. We'll talk about that shortly. But one of the, one of the bigger fears that, that came in from the comments that I received um, since announcing this episode was, where am I going to get my ideas from? If I, if I, if I do this, then where, where does the inspiration come from? How do I, how do I think of stuff to do? You know, I've got some videos, whether it's videos or blogs, obviously we're focusing on, on, on videos now, but you can video blog now. I believe it's called a vlog, right? And um, I'm down with the kids. So where, 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 where do, you know, where do, well, no, let's go back a step. How regularly should we be doing videos? If we do them, obviously it's not a, it's not a law, but I mean, in your own experiences, if you if you there has to be a certain continuity and consistency to them. Um, might come to you first, Dave, because I suspect you do them daily at one point, didn't you? you? You were almost banging. I seem to recall you putting one out almost every single day for a period of time. Yeah, you you were getting really fed up with seeing me twice a day, weren't you? That was that was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was challenged actually by a coach of mine in May 26, 2016, 2017, last year to put out a two minute video twice a day for 14 days. So that was 28 videos in that short period. And the first thing I said was unrepeatable on a live pod chat live, but it was, it was pretty, my God, what am I going to do? But I was more scared of upsetting him than I was of, of doing the content. And you just, yeah. You, I mean, in terms of how, how often do you post, it, it's how long's a piece of string because if you're going to have that consistency, it's no good doing three posts a day for, for three weeks and then doing nothing for three months. It's best to look at what you can put out there. So if you can only post once a week, post once a week. Plan it a month in advance. Plan it 52 weeks in advance if you want to, as long as you've got that consistent voice out there. So yeah, it's really down to the individual what you can manage. And, and your, your ideas, Dave, where, where, where do you get them from? Do, do they literally just come to you? Do you, do you have a couple, in a couple in a row and you quickly write them down? Do you, you know, it's like trying to, you know, waking up from a dream and quickly jot them down. Where, where, do you, where do you get the ideas from? How many ideas have you got in your head for videos at any one time? Oh, goodness me. Do you know, um, when, when challenged, you, your head goes empty. But if you think about the fact that maybe you see 10 patients a day on average in a, in a, a standard podiatry clinic, that is 10 different pieces of information and 10 different pieces of content. You could have a nail problem, you could have a Veruca, you could have an, you know, an ingrown toenail, you could have a biomechanical problem or any number of biomechanical problems. And content's a bit like rabbits, that once you get a few bits of content there, it just breeds other bits of content. And then people comment on your videos and say, oh, can you do one on this? And you go, right, yeah, I'll write that down. And it just goes from there. There's, there's days where I have no ideas at all. And actually, the best thing to do there is to go and do a live about how you have no ideas at all, just to be <laughs> honest about the position you're in. You know, it's it, people like that kind of thing. But content, content is absolutely everywhere. So, for example, if I was really desperate, I'd go onto John's channel 
and I go onto the Melissa channel and I would be <laughs> borrowing ideas from them and I'd expect them to do the same from other people. Yeah. So um, Melissa, I remember, uh, sorry, sorry, you're still going, Dave. Sorry, I forgot. Sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. It, I, didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. But I just it, something came to me. I saw in a, a video of yours, Melissa, a while ago, um, which felt like one of the ones Craig was referring to about being a bit impromptu, where I think you'd had a, a cancellation or, or you had a spot in your diary and you'd had, you had some sore calves because I think you'd, you'd been running. And you just have one of your colleagues just, just working on your calves. And it was like probably something that happens every day in every yeah. clinic. But it's like, well, why... Why don't we just share this? And um, yeah. was that as as was that as uncontrived and sort of I I impulsive as it appeared? Yeah. So I think it's just yeah, it's those impromptu kind of scenarios where you think, well, let's just get the let's just get the iPhone out and just film this. Why not? But I think exactly what Dave said is yeah, getting the good content out there. So I heard just recently that you should aim to have an idea every day. So what I did in advance was I wrote up a list of 350 ideas. So I had an idea for every day of the year. So if I had a day where I didn't really have an idea, you know, fresh that came to mind, I have a list there. So what I have written a list up is of questions that people commonly ask. And we have a million different questions that people ask us all the time. You know, for example, uh, my feet hurt the first few steps in the morning. So making a video, why do my feet hurt with the first few steps in the morning? I think people, they may not be asking us a question directly, but they're constantly wondering why is this happening? So I think exactly what Dave said is just taking out that information from your consult that you hear every day over and over and then using that in your videos. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's called keyword research. That's what happens on on google you know that people type in why do my feet hurt in the first two steps of the morning yeah. and it's about producing content that answers that question and hopefully um your videos or your content turns up in response to those questions on youtube uh, and in google yeah i think uh, your, your the points you both made so far are brilliant in that use your your clinical time you don't having to sit there outside clinic and think ideas out of nowhere use that time with the, with your patients as your inspiration i remember being at university when they said just think of the project you want to write for your dissertation as a student and you just had no ideas whereas as soon as you get into clinical practice after a few years of seeing patients you've just got thousands of ideas for research because it because you, you you're living it day in day out you're getting questions day in day out um Jonathan, coming on to you mm -hmm. with your um, immense audience and huge numbers of views, does that, do you, uh, slightly different question for you really, do you feel a, a level of pressure that perhaps the rest of us don't feel, <laughs> given that you now have this, you know, we, 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 we say let's put out one a week or, or one every three days or one a fortnight, and the reality is whether I, if I put a video on my YouTube channel or not, no one really cares. Do you, when you've got a huge audience, um, do you feel a level of pressure to then continue to deliver what they expect? For sure. The, these people are clicking to, to see these, kind, these kinds of videos. So there's always, um, like you said, the back of the mind pressure that you have to be producing content. Uh, YouTube is just like Google. It's a big game. They want to see how consistent you're posting. Uh, they want to see the engagement of all the, how many people are liking, not liking. But as both of, as Melissa and Dave said, like being a YouTuber, a true YouTuber is so hard because they have to come up with some ridiculous content all the time. They have to stick with trends. They have to do something that might not be their norm. But for us, we're literally just filming our everyday stuff, what we do with our patients every single day. So to me, it's like Dave said, if you have 10 people in that day, there's probably something that people want to learn about. So you just, I really don't feel that pressure because I just literally filming what I'm doing every single day. So it's, it's really nice for us to, to have the content because we have the knowledge, we have the patience, we have the content that's just in front. We just have to capture it. That's all we have to do, yeah. just capture yeah. it. Yeah, Jonathan, I just, shared, I just shared just on the screen just then that, that video you did with that 100-year-old patient. I mean, what a simple, brilliant idea. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. but I also, I also, I'm just trying to re reflect my memory. I, I vaguely recall you giving in one giving a local anaesthetic to a hockey player, was it? And then 
he was yes. or something you know, but stuff like that but then, then didn't you follow him up a, another video a couple of weeks ago of the same guy that the, the re, you know so no, it's just just real simple day-to-day stuff was that was that stuff. was that a maple leaf was it do you tell me one of the maple leaves cried with a local please tell me that happened <laughs> <laughs> um so i think yeah i think the the common theme here and it doesn't surprise me all agree is our inspiration the concern about ideas shouldn't really be a concern it, it, you know our inspiration comes from what which we, we just take it from what we're doing anyway um and that's that's pretty good what about the other massive concern people have and that's uh the fear i mean i guess it is a bit nervy when you first do it. I still, I still not hugely comfortable doing it. If I'm honest, even after 42 weeks of this kind of stuff, um, a simple thing to say to someone would be just, just get it done. Just get doing it. A bit like public speaking, and the more you do it, the less fearful you become. But I mean, it's not always quite that simple for people to, to do it. Even the people that really see the value in it, they've seen the stats about how we're consuming more video than any other form of media. How would you sort of advise people to? to just do that first one, if that is their biggest uh, genuine fear. Um, let, let's, let's ask you, Melissa, first. I think, I think it's best to just set a plan in advance. So for example, I'm going to do a video, one video a week for the next three months or whatever it may be. So I think just set yourself an achievable goal to start with. And the other side of that is exactly what you said, Ian, is just to do it. Uh, the only way that you get more comfortable with what is uncomfortable is through pushing through your comfort zone and just getting more familiar with it, I think. Yeah. Um, Dave? The fear isn't going anywhere. Um, it, it will still be there after your hundredth video. So it, 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 yeah, it is a case of, of just doing it. The, the great thing now is that you can practice and if you don't like it you can delete it and you can practice if you don't like it you can delete it and you, you can delete it as many times as you like but yeah you, you've really just got to you've really except when you to, except when you go live <laughs> yeah there, there is that problem. Yeah, you don't go live for your first one unless unless you, you really want to have a go but i think yeah. you know there's there's many there's many many sides to it and actually all of the stories that we have in our heads about oh, it's not going to go well, or I don't like the camera. It, it's usually stories we feed ourselves, and no one, no one particularly cares about us if, if, if we're being honest. They're more interested in their own problems day by day, and if we can resonate with those problems, it's great. So no, no one really worries. Just, yeah, just go for it. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan, anything to add to that? To that? Uh, I'll just talk about the content, because in the beginning, um, like Melissa said, you just start with what you feel comfortable with. I just started doing one video a week, uh, it took me like three, four hours to edit one video and I was just so nervous. And my beginning videos I watch, I put weird sounds and emojis and I, you know what? It's a learning experience. Like everyone's like, you've got to keep moving and the audience is going to see how you evolve. Um, and then you just keep going till what you feel really comfortable with posting. Uh, you do get into your own flow and that's the nice thing about everyone's content, Melissa's. Uh, Dave's is everyone has their own style and as you get into the groove of things you just kind of really get to show your own personality and that's what might if you feel that's not comfortable doing a certain topic or a certain style of video stay away from it you just stick with really what you know and what you feel that you're best at and that's what's going to shine on video and the only way is with, with, is with experience Actually, that's, that's one of the big advantages of doing a live. You don't have to do the editing. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally, literally the only advantage. The rest of it is utterly terrifying. Um, you, you, say, you say that, you say that, but actually if you're going to use it properly, you, you do take it away, you edit it, you transcribe it, you turn it into, you, you repurpose it. So you, you make oh. it spread across all channels. So, you know, I, mean, I, I take this. I Craig, take this, Craig does all that. Craig does that. I just let Craig do that. Bit. Yeah, I, well, I take this live video and I obviously edit the, edit the thumbnail at the beginning and the title and cut off the end and you know, yeah. But it's not not. It's still live and yeah, yeah. Actually, um, I'm sure when you edit it, put hair on us. That's what we. Do. <laughs> Before Actually, we, we oh, sorry, oh, sorry, I'm Craig. Sorry. We've just had a question come in from. Hello, and I just maybe now's the time to address it. Um, we did actually discuss this briefly right at the very start before we properly went live. Oh, hang on, my screen's frozen. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got it here. Oh, yeah. About showing the treatment of a patient on your video, how do you explain the video aspect to the patient in order to get their permission? And I think that's the key thing, this, this permission. Um, but yeah, I don't know. How, how, do you, how do you go about that, Jonathan, convincing a patient to come on and, and record with you and... 
Mm, I'm so guessing if, if, if yeah, go ahead, Ian. Well, I was I was saying I'm guessing if a lot of people come to you already aware of your YouTube channel, which they must do by now. <laughs> when you get the video, when they get when you get the video out, they're probably firstly not not, not surprised. <laughs> if I came to see you and you didn't get the video out, I'd be like, oh, what's what's the big deal? What, am I not good enough for your channel? Like, I mean, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So the big thing is just, again, with everything we do is just consent. You know, with the plan that I, I, I would like to film this is a very interesting case. Why I'm going to be filming for educational purposes to show people how to treat this kind of issue. Um, we're just going to show your feet. They are more than happy to do that. Then I do have uh, a little consent form just giving me the ability or them signing that I have the right to film and I have the rights to, to the video. But again, it's mostly just consent and explaining to them what's going to happen and where I'm going to be putting it on. So again, most people feel pretty comfortable. In the beginning, it was very hard. I felt very nervous and weird ask, asking them to, to do this. Um, but then later on, I say, hey, this is a really interesting case. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, this is where I post things for, to educate people, to show people what can happen with the feed and what we can do. You know, can we film? Can we do this? And it's just going to be a free. Yes. Awesome. Perfect. And off we go. And you really get into the groove afterwards. Yeah. Actually, can I ask Jonathan, have any of them asked to be paid? No, not yet. <laughs> uh, not yet. I'm sure there's going to be some people, but not everyone. <laughs> because that, that, this, that, that actually leads nicely into a comment here for you, Dave. Apparently Toby appeared in one of your videos and he's still waiting for his check. <laughs> <laughs> When he can, when he can show me proof of his equity card, we can have that conversation. So, <laughs> and after uh, uh, Ian and uh, Frank pay you, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, Jonathan, had, had, do you have many patients say no? Yes, of course. Yeah, but so, is that many, yeah. or is it? Yeah, no. They say I know. I I say no. It's just going to be your feet, and they say no. I I just don't feel comfortable. Mm. No problem. It, it's no issue, and you can have a feeling for patients, just like. You know, you get the how, how people are. So there's some people I will ask, some people I don't. And the ones that say no when I do ask, leave it like that. No, no biggie. I want everyone to feel comfortable. Yeah. Good. Great. Before we get on to some of the logistics, the sort of how, how we take videos and, 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 thing, and where we should put them and things like that, one quick final comment on the other fear that people have. So we've talked about the fear of you know, people's faces being at – fear of, of – people putting their face out there and the fear of um, not having ideas. And I guess off the back of putting yourself out there and all the possible pros that come with that, one of the big cons is that you, you often get the, the trolls or the haters as, as the kids call them nowadays. And um, I think it would be quite fun um, if we each, because I know all of us have, have put ourselves out there over the years, if we each sort of let everyone know that, that it happens to everyone by, by telling everyone that the favorite horrible comment that we received on one of our videos I'll, I'll i'll get it started my absolute favorite was i did a video about four or five years ago my eldest son was a baby and i was conscious that he i didn't want to wake him up so when i was videoing it i just lowered my voice slightly into like a, a nice i was just narrating a powerpoint i think a nice calm this is what we're doing so we're doing and one of the comments said something along the lines of why is this guy whispering does he live in the ba Does he live in his mum's basement or, or something? Like that. I, think, I think this guy lives. In, uh, this guy sounds like he lives in his mum's basement, and it, it's a throwaway comment. Everyone's a, everyone's a, you know um, a warrior when they're behind their keyboard. But you know some of these comments that you see can can feel quite personal. They can bother you. Um, so could you all each tell us one of the comments? You don't it doesn't have to be too much of a personal one, but one of the comments you received, and also just how you deal with them. How do you how do you develop thick enough skin to let them bounce off of you? Um, Jonathan, let's go to you first, because you probably get more comments than, than most. So um, you've got more to choose from, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty lucky where the majority of the comments are pretty good. But the only negative comments, um, again, it's actually, if you think about it, it's about my actual technique, they'll say, oh, you didn't cut the nail right, or you didn't clean that up properly. I could have done a better job. Um, it's a lot about just saying, you didn't do a really great job on your work. And uh, no matter how happy the majority of the people are like you said there's always going to be someone just hating and you just have to feel confident in your work if you if you put it out there you should be comfortable knowing that there's just some people who are not going to like what you do and uh, you just hope that the majority of the people who are watching and who do support you are fairly happy so i don't really pay too much attention to it um 
and I just keep doing my thing and just making sure that I do a good job. And if I do the best job I can, that's all you can really hope for. Yeah. Um, Melissa, much, much hate? Thankfully, no, not yet. I'm sure at some point maybe <laughs> something. I think that the main, uh, not hate as such, but the main things would be maybe people writing comments of that, that hasn't worked for me or like I've tried everything, but it hasn't made my heel pain better, for example. So I think it's just important to reach out and engage with those people to get a better understanding of why they're saying that, what treatment they've actually had to help understand, you know, if it's a certain treatment that we've maybe made a video about and they're saying that that hasn't worked for me, understanding that, you know, this one treatment may not be the solution for everybody. So just understanding, you know, why it is, what, why they're saying what it is. I mean, you may not always get a reply back from that, but I think at the end of the day, if you reach out to try and at least understand where that perspective is coming from, then that's the best that you can do. Yeah. Interesting that a lot of your negative comments are not negative, but you know, the ones that aren't immediately positive, they seem to be coming from, um, you know, potential patients, the public, whereas I, what I gathered from Jonathan's comment was it seems more like professional professional jealousy, uh, clearly uh, playing its part there, but professional, yeah. I mean um, jo uh, Dave um, you must get loads of hate because you're, you're the worst looking out of all of us so what's yeah. to say to you? Yeah, that's true actually um, I, do, <laughs> I, I have to say that, that I, I, I get quite a lot of love on mine, I get, I get some really nice comments on the whole um, and, that, that, and that's great, and, and it it's either I'm doing something very right or I'm, I'm not contrary and, and I'm not, I'm not being ranty and angry enough, but just to put it into context, before I tell you, before I put it into context, my Facebook page is the foot and leg magician. And the reason it's the foot and leg magician is that you go to a network meeting and say, I'm a podiatrist, but everyone goes, Oh, what's that? But if you say foot and leg magician, they all want to know a bit more. But I did a video and, and somebody commented on who I believe was a podiatrist. And they said, he's not a magician. He's a twat. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that was it. And I, I thought, I thought, can I engage with this person? I thought there's probably no way I can engage with this person. I thought it was an absolutely genius, genius comment. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. That's probably that the worst I've had. So that yeah. sounds like the work of Toby. Toby. That sounds like the work of Toby, if I'm honest. No, it wasn't Toby. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's worrying. We both thought that at the same time. Though. Yeah. Um, Going to say, I wish I'd, th I wish I'd thought of that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just written that one down. Um, Craig, well, no, give I us think, yours. Look, I, I, I won't do anything specific, but what I'll just let me just bring up. Um, some of the things that um, I, I was just looking at the stats for our pod chat live um, uh, channel and we got two dislikes last month, <laughs> oh, <me. laughs> you know, um, I thought oh, I haven't worked out what video they're on, but if I just, let me just, uh, sorry, I'll just share a couple of other things. But to put that into context, well, if those people, uh, if those people who didn't like it, let us know their names, we can give them their money back, can't we? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but, but then I go to Jonathan's channel and I see this his most popular video with nine million views has five oh. and a half thousand uh, downvotes. So I don't feel too bad that we only got two. <laughs> um, but the, as a percentage, that's probably about the same in fairness, but. 11% and 16%, I just checked. <laughs> yeah, there we go, there we go. He's a stats man, I knew it. <laughs> um, but just on that, you know, and someone's already made a comment, you know, haters gonna hate. And I'm just gonna share this YouTube channel. This is um, Danielle, I can't remember her surname. She's got a channel called Creator Answers in which she does a lot of, or she or he, she's a transgender, but she does a lot of videos on how to do thumbnails, um, uh, uh, gear reviews and stuff like that and this video that she put here is really really good how to deal with hate online and while this channel is her um, how to do YouTube channel how to do videos channel she does have a couple of other channels one to do with trans issues another one on cooking so you can imagine the amount of hate comments that she gets and this video is absolutely brilliant how to deal with it she looks at hate as engagement um, Facebook, YouTube, love engagement. So negative comments and down votes are engagement. Um, the more engagement you, you get, the, the more promoted your videos become. So she, she's really, really good at turning that into a positive. Um, I, will, I will link to her channel in, in the comments, but um, a, lot of, a lot of advice on you know, how to deal with trolls, camera reviews, um, how to get your first 100 subscribers. Yeah, a lot of good um, technical stuff on Facebook. So um, I do highly recommend that. Um, video on how to deal with hate. It, it really does sum it up very well. Good stuff. 
Right, let's let's let, let's let's pick the mood up. Let's let's g everyone up a bit more and get onto um, the actual videoing. So clearly, there are different. Uh, how should we phrase it? Levels of commitment here. So you can have an idea in clinic, um, like Melissa did when she wanted her, her colleague to work on her calves. And you can just, I'm guessing, just grab your smartphone and hit record. Or you can go to the level of nerd that, that, that Craig sits at, where he sits in front of a green screen and he's got his two big lamps and things. And um, I guess uh, you start somewhere and you perhaps evolve onto somewhere else. Jonathan, I'll start with you because I, I, it's a question I've, I've wondered for a while, having looked at your channel. Um, where do you sit between these two spectrums? Because your videos, they, they just look, I mean, they're clearly so professionally done with regards to the thumbnail design and things. So could you give us a bit of an insight into the, the, the video? Is it just your smartphone or on a tripod or have you got something a bit more techy? And then how much post video sort of work are, are you putting in or are you are you too important now and you got someone to do that for you that probably uh, is more likely I, guess. Uh, <laughs> I still do every every aspect myself everything i do is on my own oh i gotta um so the your web designer <laughs> <laughs> no, so this is actually the camera that i've been using for the last year and a half it's just a simple point and shoot camera it costed me five hundred dollars it's a Sony, and I literally just use this and a tripod, and I set it up on an angle that hopefully gets the best view possible, and just like that, just film lighting that's in the office as is, and I've been just editing all my videos with iMovie on my laptop, and I didn't know how to edit a single video. I don't know how to make a thumbnail, so I just, like everyone else, go on YouTube, you go on Google, and how do I make a thumbnail, and you just start doing it like that um, but recently uh, last week I finally bought a better camera so I bought this one um, so what happens I filmed a, a couple things today it has a pop-up screen so I can see a better angle because I noticed some of my videos um, you're off off frame and then this one actually has a zoom so I actually got some great video today so I started this again with just a simple point and shoot camera, nothing special on what I uh, program I already had on my computer and you just go from there. Is that, is that the M50? No, this is the... Nerd! Well, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Canon SLT. Because that's, it's, really, it's really interesting because the, that, that camera with the fact that the screen turns around so you can see it is massively valuable. Really, really good to kind yeah, of help your videos is. to the next level. It yeah, is. it's really, really good. Yeah. Sorry, I'll go back. I'll go back no, to Dave. Dave now. Jump in, Dave. Jump in. Let's bring you in. Because I, I, you know, you're anyone who knows you has seen you walking around the UK conference with some kind of, you look like a C3PO. You got like, you know, you got a tripod <laughs> up in your arm. You've got, you know, um, talk to us about sort of your, your daily videos. How much kind of pre and post videos sort of uh, timing you're spending and the kind of kit you're using nowadays? Uh, iPhone generally, I've played around with uh, GoPros, but they, they can be a bit funny. An external microphone plugged into that, usually like a Lavalier one like this, so it's just one which plugs straight into the bottom. Or a, a shotgun mic, which sits on top. It's, it has a little furry thing to stop wind noise, which is called a dead cat, and it's not really a dead cat. And then some external lighting as well. I like to use a rig, which is, it's in the car at the moment, but I use a rig which holds the phone sits on a tripod underneath but allows for the light and the microphone to fit on and then you can just carry it round. Um, and it's by far the simple thing. See, John, John's probably got one now and he's probably running off to get one as we speak. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you keep, keep it simple. And I think that the best, the best camera you have is the one which you have with you. Mm -hmm. And the iPhone does, you know, on the, the rear-facing camera, it's at least 1080p, so it's high def. You can do 4K from the other video. Um, and then when it comes to editing, I started off with iMovie, and I love iMovie, it's, it's great. But I use now a piece of software called Premiere Pro, which is yes. an Adobe piece of software, which, which is great. It's a really, really good piece of software. Um, and on the iPad, I will use a piece of software called LumaFusion, mm. which allows you to do, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it allows you to do YouTube, or, sorry, Instagram TV shaped channels so instead of being sort of 16 across and nine down it's it's 16 up and nine across so it just gives you a slightly different different version but you can edit you can put text on it you can do it's a really powerful piece of software so and that's about that's about as much as i do i'd like to start sticking if i'm going to do more videos actually outsourcing it a little bit to editors because it does take quite a bit of time but then there's a bit of perfectionist in me which doesn't like to give it to anyone else uh, all, all those things you've mentioned there, free, Dave, or do you have to purchase some of those? 
No, how about you can have a, an, an affiliate link to my Amazon store? No. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you know, probably if you're going to spend money on it, the, I mean, the iPhone obviously has a cost, but most people have a phone of some kind. Other, other phones other than iPhones are available. Um, light itself, you're probably looking about a tenner for a battery-powered LED one. Tripod can be anything from probably 10 quid upwards. Um, the little cage thing's about the same. So you, you could probably get a decent setup for under 50 quid. And all the post post video editing apps and kit you use. I know iMovie's free, but the other two that you mentioned that people might not be familiar with. iMovie, they... yeah, iMovie's free on free on a Mac. There is a, a Windows Movie Maker which you can use, and if you've got an iPad, you can use iMovie as well. But I I think it depends how much editing you want to do. If you're just looking to cut out bits and slice and have transitions, iMovie is is perfectly adequate. <clears throat> That's one of your fans calling, isn't it? Um, it is another craft. YouTube, YouTube calling. You're, you're never <laughs> YouTube. But, um, but yeah, you, it, I, I think it's actually worth investing in the software to, to do it. If you're going to be doing more of it, it's, it's, it's useful to have that software. Yeah. And uh, finally, Melissa, you uh, just using your smartphone, do you, you, you go up a notch when you do things that have got a bit, clearly when you were having your leg massage, it was get the phone out time, but the ones that you plan a bit more, do you use any, anything, um, anything yeah, different? Yeah, so pretty much uh, like Jonathan set up, we just have, yeah, a camera. It, yeah, it wasn't anything crazy expensive, tripod set up. And with those videos, yeah, they are more the pre-planned videos that I'll also edit on iMovie. I've tried Adobe, but I think iMovie is good because it just is there on your computer rather than something else you have to purchase on top. Uh, but something new that I've come across is this little device. So <laughs> it's a little like lavalier microphone that you can plug on, but then there's also, I don't know where it is, but I've got a little attachment that plugs into your iPhone as well. So, yeah. like, you can you can be talking and have really clear audio, but you don't need to be attached to your phone. So I can be walking around our gym or whatever it may be, and the audio is super crystal clear. And, yeah, it's being recorded on the video. Because so I think we had had some feedback that the audio wasn't amazing. So, yeah, this little device cost me about $150. But I think it's such a good investment to have clear audio on your video and especially that you can move around and be doing things while this is just sitting in my pocket and then transmitting to my phone. Yeah, handy. That's awesome. That is awesome. Could you mind um, dropping the link to that in the, uh, in the comments yeah. of the video later? Um, it's cool. it's cool. yeah. I'll drop the link as well. <laughs> oh, cool. Awesome. Samsung Great. Lavalier. Yeah, I'll do that. actually, just 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 on the gear side, an, another YouTube channel worth following is um is Justin Brown from Primal Video. I'm actually a paid member of his um, <clears throat> mentor group, but he puts out a lot of videos about how to make animated titles, best free editing software, you know, a, a lot on the um, technical side, how to film with an iPhone, um, yeah, best level of mics for the iPhone and Android. So, um. Justin puts out a lot of stuff like that, so I'll, you know, I'll drop a link to his channel in the uh, comment. Perfect, great. So it's pretty clear if you've got a good phone or a camera, which most people have already, you need, really need to spend about 50 pounds on a tri uh, you know, some form of, of microphone and tripod, and, and you're pretty much good to go, and then you get all the inspiration from your patients. And, and why, what, you know, the, the reasonable question to now come to is why why isn't everyone doing this? It can't, is it, is it, it can't just be the fear. It must be, it must be another reason why more people aren't doing it. What do you think the biggest barrier um, to, to everyone doing it is? Because surely if every single podiatrist, uh, chiropodist, uh, Jonathan, on the planet was doing, was doing this, then the constant debate about people not knowing who we are and what we do would, would be dead. So what's, it can't just be fear, can it? What, what do you think holds people back? Um, who should I send that one to? Because it's a bit of a horrible question. I'm going to send it to Dave. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. Um, I, I I think there's there's lots of reasons why, and I think I think fear is is you can split into many different areas, can't you? So there's, you know, I don't have the equipment, I don't know how to use it, I don't know how to edit, I don't know what to say. I've got a face for radio. I, I sound like I'm from Birmingham. Um, <laughs> I no one will like my content. I'm going to get haters. Um, my mother might watch it and she won't like it. There's so many. So Sounds like reasons. therapy, Dave. You just want to get it off your chest. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yes. met my, um, so 
<laughs> people will find lots and lots of reasons not to do it. I don't have time. Um, I'm busy in clinic, you know, and it, there's, there's so many things and they're, they're all, they're all, okay, the, the equipment stuff, yeah, I, I get that if people don't have the equipment or the editing skills, but there's other people who can do it. But all the other stuff is just this, it's this story that we tell ourselves and you've you just got to get past that and just do it. You know, I think, I think, I think people haven't realized that the benefits of everyone pulling together and doing video or doing a, a real increase in social media and what it will do for depression. The, the professions people haven't realized the importance of that yet um, and maybe when they do the, that will be a difference but it's it's something which everyone should do and i i, I do struggle sometimes why lots and lots of people don't do it mm. keeps me awake at night i can i can say yeah you look tired you do look Thanks. tired um <laughs> i'm conscious that jonathan's got a patient in eight minutes and there's a question we're not going to probably get through all these questions before he has to leave and there's a question on here that I definitely want to make sure I get his answer to before he goes. So I hope it's not losing the flow of what we're doing too much, but it was on the ideal length of a video. And um, clearly there's that you can read blogs and there's lots of different opinions out there. If, if something's too short, it won't give enough value. If something's too long, it will put people off. Um, and it's probably going to be channel specific. Instagram has obviously video uh, length uh, truncated compared to YouTube, etc. cetera. Um, in your experience, I mean, I mean, were you advised, Jonathan, or, or in your experience, have you played around with different length videos? Are all your videos about the same length. Just talk us through your your thought process of, of and has it changed from the start to where you are now? Um, there is definitely an ideal length of video, and the interesting thing is looking at the analytics of all my videos. The majority watch time is five minutes. That's it, five minutes but all my videos are mostly 15 to 20 minutes long. My videos are treatment videos. So I, I could cut it or edit out the parts just to the good stuff, but I really just leave the whole treatment there to see. And I feel the people who are really um, supportive and engaged will watch for the majority of the video. But the truth of the matter is most people are only watching for five minutes. So again, if you give them too much, you'll probably lose a lot of people. Uh, their attention span now is pretty short. So I would probably stick to something that's probably better to be short and sweet and juicy to have a longer video. But uh, I haven't changed that as of yet. I'm just still seeing with the longer videos because again, that's what I guess people are, have been sticking for. But I know there is, like you said, short and sweet, I, I really think is the best. And, and with your videos, do you see the 15 minute video that was people are on average watching to five, are the, are the analytics sensitive enough to can you say oh people are fast forwarding to that five minutes where the enucleation occurs or the, the juicy stuff or you just don't know i don't know i don't know okay. but i have a feeling okay. it's probably just the amount of time they spent on the video okay so they're probably fast forwarding to where the good stuff is right where the exactly. squeezing or the pulling or the, the cutting is yeah um yeah, obviously it's probably a different question for, for Facebook um, and we'll come to you Melissa because I know you do your, your most uh, most of your videos that I've seen have been on Facebook I don't know do you do, you do YouTube and Instagram as well forgive me for I not do. I've tried Instagram but nothing on or oh, maybe a couple of videos on YouTube but nothing consistent on YouTube so mainly Facebook and <clears> now <throat> Instagram as well uh, so definitely they're quite short so less than two minutes I think the only time when it goes over is, is, for example, if we do a Facebook Live and before you know it, five minutes is gone. I don't know. It just seems to go really quickly. But yeah. it, I think, yeah, people are just scrolling through the Facebook feed. They're not looking to find a half an hour video. I think if I look at a video on Facebook and it's half an hour, I would just think, yeah, I'll watch that another time. And that, ne that another time never comes. So... Mm. I think the shorter the better just keeping it concise is the way to go yeah but we do we do seem to sorry Craig go on I just gotta say Melissa you should you probably should give some thought to repurposing your videos and put, putting them on YouTube because YouTube yeah. is different because people find it by searching they're looking for that content yeah uh, I think it's that, on. yeah it's on the to-do yeah. list, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> the increasing to-do list. Uh, you're right, though. You touch on a really interesting point there, which is that today's society are, are, are time poor and looking for much quicker gratification. Very few people have 30 minutes right now. And I'm, I'm so guilty of having so many things to watch later. And they're not all going to get watched later. And scrolling down the news feed, particularly on, on, on Facebook, um, 
you just have to catch people's eye. I read a stat the other day, and I'd love to get your all your takes on it, which was that they estimate eighty percent of people who watch videos are doing so without sound, probably because they're on they're, they're somewhere public or they're on a train. And, and this particular blog that I read said that was the the main rationale for including subtitles in your video. You see a lot of people do it. So I've done, I've tried this on a couple of my videos. It's a bit of extra post video sort of uh, work but um is it something any of you have dabbled with subtitles given given that um if this stat is indeed true that people are watching videos without sound nowadays yeah yeah i've used it, it it's in fact i had a i had someone comment on one of my videos about three weeks ago and i i, I think it was from i think it was from spain possibly or portugal um, and he just said, you know, I have I have trouble with the, the speed of the voice in the English language, which I don't think was a dig at me, but it was it, it, it certainly got me to the heart. So I actually went out and got um, subtitles put on there for him and just went, here you go. Here's all my subtitles, put it on YouTube. And it was great because it meant that he could keep up with the the, the content by reading as well. And it was, yeah, it makes a massive difference. Um, Jonathan, I, subtitles on on your YouTube channel? Is that something we can expect to see? I know there's a little button on YouTube where you can press anyway and it'll, I think it'll transcript it anyway, yeah. isn't there? I think all my videos have CCs or closed caption up till the last mm. 10 videos and it was really helpful. A lot of people, um, again, can just watch and read the combo without actually having to listen. But it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. Mm. Someone has to finally type in, listen, and transcribe the whole conversation, which can be tedious, but it is yeah. helpful. There are, there are some good, it's another good use of which is rev.com, R-E-V.com, where if you've got a YouTube video, you can send a link to them and they'll transcribe it and they'll do it in other languages for you as well. Um, and it's oh, wow. something like, a, so it's a dollar a minute. It's, it's brilliant. And they can, they can usually turn around English language ones in, in less than 24 hours. Very, very good. Very useful. So the last, the last one I did, um, I just got uh, someone from... I, I don't know where they were from in the world, but you know the the website Fiverr, and it just cost me five dollars. And I just sent them the video, sent them the the text, yep. picked the font, and within two working days it had come back. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was an extra couple of days of time before, and it was a, a bit of work because I had to type out the transcript, and it was five dollars. But yeah, it, it was just an experiment. So that, I guess it's an option, isn't it? Um, do the trans how do you translate over pronation into other languages? <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> um, so, Jonathan, I'm conscious that you are probably yeah, about to leave. I've been here for the last ten minutes, but uh, I told them I said, <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, but uh, sorry, sorry. I'm about to go anytime soon. So, yeah. You, you have any yeah. Last well, you? the last question was uh, for all of you: was what are your top three tips for those doing videos? So, uh, we'll come to you first, Jonathan. You can answer these three, and then you can exit stage stage right. Um, big thing is you have to be yourself like you have to portray yourself the way you really are because um, if you try to fake it people will know if people come in to finally see you they'll know and then you're really trying harder than you really need to and it's gonna really show so be yourself and number two um, be original so you have to find your own way your own style it's good copying and kind of mimicking or uh, uh, mimicking someone in the beginning but in the end you have to really develop your own style and flow um, uh, of your own content and I guess number three would be don't give up it's it's really really hard um, you can there's people I read stories all the time on uh, YouTube about they posted a video every single day or let's say once a week for months years and their channel never grows and then suddenly after four or five years of posting suddenly YouTube's algorithm hits and their views go through the roof. Um, for me, I, I, I really did get really lucky. Within a 18 months, I'm already where the channel is now. Um, but you see those channels that have million subscribers, have million of views a day. So it's just never giving up. It's just keep putting in the hard work. A lot of people don't know that every single night I'm editing for two, three hours all the time. I have no life. This is what I do here and then go home. <laughs> That's why I put that on my in the gym as well. That's why you're in such good company here. And I don't think any of us have any lives. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I say never give up. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Massively, so, so massively thank, appreciate it. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, hey, you're thank welcome you. to leave your video on with your patient there in the background if you like. <laughs>
Um, but I know, I know you got to go. So, so thanks, Jonathan, and I'll, I'll see you in November. <laughs> yes, I, I'm excited to see you there. I might throw you over the falls, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's come on to uh, Dave. Your top three tips. There's a there's a there's a great saying which is the best time to tart to to tart a tree. No, the best time to plant a tree. I don't know. I got tarts on the brain. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, um, and the second best time is now. So my first tip is start now. Just just go and do it. Um, second tip: keep it simple. Don't try and overcomplicate it. Don't try and make it more difficult than it needs to be. Um, and the third is that you know you have a valuable message and people want to hear it. And actually, by not putting your content out there, you're denying people the opportunity to hear the, the, the amazing stuff you've got to, to spread. Plus all of, all of John's stuff, John, you know, the, the authenticity one is massively important. So yeah, those, those are my three. Lovely. Uh, Melissa. Uh, I think, yeah, I have to agree with all that's been said so far. So I think exactly what Dave said was my first one. Just do it, just do it and you'll get better at it <clears> in <throat> time. Uh, the next one is plan in advance. So just put it in your diary. Set yourself a goal that that's when it's going to happen rather than just letting it happen by chance. It never seems to happen if, if you leave it by chance. And then being social, so engaging with people on social media. If you're putting up content, uh, be prepared to answer questions, promote discussion, and yeah, you just see where it takes you. Yeah, I think that last point's a great point. I see a lot of people putting posts up, whether it be videos or something. You know, you know, just post infographics and they, they, they're striving for, for, for reach or engagement, but then they don't realize the role they play in that. So mm. they have people commenting, whether, whether good or bad, or, or even asking questions, and then they're just, just not replying. Yeah. Um, and I know, it, obviously, yeah, yeah, we're all busy, but I mean, if you're going to put it out there, you, you gotta, you gotta deal with the hate, you gotta deal with the love, but you've also gotta, you know, it, it, encourage the discussion that's kind of what it's all about i think that i think that last point's superb um craig what are your top three let's not pretend you're not a video guru uh, you know sitting there oh, silently I, with I, your in your I, studio I'm just about ready to stop the live feed i wasn't even thinking about the question um oh, I, <laughs> he's zoned out he's zoned out on us how dare he <laughs> I, I, actually, I i'm obviously i focus more on the technical side you know the, the lighting so crucial you know for, for those of you who haven't seen my studio i have i have i have proper studio lighting Lighting up the green screen. Um, really, it's a good room. <laughs> well, it's my it's my lounge room. The wife loves it when I go away. <laughs> she gets her lounge back. No, I, I just think it's the, and I think Melissa touched on earlier on the audio is so crucial as well. Um, if, if you're going to get negative comments about the technicalities of it, it's all often about the audio. So yeah, let me show you my my lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was expecting a small child to be holding something. <laughs> so, so yeah. just go to show you, we, we, you, don't, you don't have to be a no. pro at this. You can, you can fake it till you make it. And I, am <laughs> living proof, I am living proof of that. So um, are there any questions that have come through on no, the, the, the chat that we need to address? There was only one about how often do you post fresh content on your channels, which we sort of did talk about um, earlier on. And I think the consensus oh. of that is... Um, do it regularly, whether it's weekly or daily. You know, you just consist do it consistently. Um, yeah. So um, no, I, I think on that note, the hour's up. Um, and super. I've got to, I've got to head off to the airport again, um, like about five minutes ago. So thanks everyone. <laughs> thanks Melissa for getting up at before four thirty a.m. your time. It's five o'clock a.m. my my time. Yeah. Hero. <laughs> and thanks guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.